This is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update video for June 29th, 1130 a.m. Here's the water vapor loop of the Atlantic Basin, and we're watching what's soon to be Hurricane Alex between the Yucatan and the southern tip of Texas. The system is moving northwest and is expected to bend back to the west towards Mexico, and the reason is is because we have a high-pressure ridge that's building here in the south, and this is going to steer our system towards Mexico. That's the consensus now amongst the models. We had a little bit of upper level wind shear yesterday due to an upper level low that has washed out in the Gulf of Mexico. So now things are favorable and this system should head into Mexico. This is an upper level low out here in the Bahamas. Nothing to be concerned about. The rest of the basin is quiet. There's a strong wave coming off Africa. We'll watch that for the next few days. But all eyes right now are on Hurricane Alex. And here's the hurt track. Um, let's go ahead and animate this of our... Uh, current position in the future forecast of Hurricane Alex and here we are we have a hurricane now and then tomorrow night around 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, central time this thing should make landfall in northern Mexico and if we stop it right there the inside the red circle um, which you probably can't see it that well but right here inside this red circle are the sustained hurricane force winds and they stay south of the Texas Mexico border not to say that they won't get gusts of hurricane force in the uh, very southeastern tip of Texas, but it looks like the majority of the worst weather is going to stay in northern Mexico as this moves in tomorrow night. Now, it's interesting is we can get the reports um, of uh, all the areas that are going to be affected here, and we, we're talking uh, tomorrow night, we're talking 66 knot gusts um, in Cameron County, Texas. Hidalgo County, 60 knots, so that's under hurricane force, and that's uh, as it's making landfall, and then it goes to less and less up the coast here. Kennedy County, we're talking 50 knots, gusting to 60, so uh, we're not we're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of high winds. This is going to be mainly a rain event for, um, for Texas, and of course the winds are going to be strong in the Gulf of Mexico, which uh, has effects on the oil. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Here are the recon fixes from the last 24 hours, and you can see it started out here. Uh, 985 millibars, 43 knot surface winds. And what's interesting in, in this first uh, observation vortex message, the inside of the eye temperature compared to the outside is almost identical. And then up here at the verse, most northern, uh, por uh, as you can see, it makes the left-hand turn here based on the recon. The pressure is down to 982 millibars, and we see a difference now between the outside and inside of the eye temperature of about 3 degrees Celsius. Now, when I used to have Derek Ord on the shows uh, last year and the year before, we'd talk about the recon fixes. And the greater the difference between the inside uh, eye temperature and the outside eye temperature, the greater the chances for intensification. So it's beginning to have a separation in those temperatures now. So we should see this thing ramping up. All right, we have all, some observations in the Gulf of Mexico right now. And the observations, these can be clicked, found by clicking the, the tracking map at Hurricane City. It's a one-stop shop for everything you need, including observations, buoys, ship data, everything, land observations, everything on that tracking chart at Hurricane City. Just click around and you'll see everything it has to offer. But we're seeing winds. The, the only good news of, in anything about this in the Gulf of Mexico is it's staying far no, enough away from the oil spill. But the bad news is Louisiana is going to get the worst of this because we have winds out of the primarily out of the east, southeast, and east in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to push all the oil that was offshore towards Louisiana again, and maybe away from the Florida Panhandle. We'll have to wait and see how that pans out, but it should be shoved into Mississippi and Louisiana for the most part with the way the wind fetch is right now, and it should remain that way for the next several days. But these buoys can be found at Hurricane City. All right, here is the uh, official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Category 2 at landfall. I still think it could get up to Cat 3 right before landfall. We'll have to see about that. And again, that's on the evening on Wednesday. Here are the models. They've shifted south again. Uh, the model consensus, again, we may be shifting the current featured city to La Pesca, Mexico, as they might get the worst conditions out of this. But models have shifted south. This is not coming into Texas or Louisiana. It does not look like at this time that that's going to happen. Here's the population scale for Mexico, and the area, the best case scenario 
would be for this to may make landfall somewhere inside this yellow area here on the map, which is a very uh, slightly sparsely populated area between zero and 10 people per square kilometer in Mexico. Now it gets a little more populated as you get close to the Texas border up here, but again, we think the worst winds are going to be south of that in the La Pesca area, so we may be featuring La Pesca, which is a small fishing town with a very small population. Um, but uh, the good news is it looks like this will hit the least populated areas if the forecast track pans out. Here's the Euro model, and the Euro has it coming in south of the Texas border here. Uh, probably right around La Pesco, maybe just a little bit north of there. The Euro's done a very good job. It had it coming in this track the whole time, uh, starting about four to five days ago. So that's been one of the best performing models, if not the best. Uh, but I'll get to the best performing model in the in the uh, global models in just a second. A good jo good job on the Euro. It's not taking it into Texas. Here are the sea surface temperatures. Very warm. We're having 30 plus degrees Celsius temperatures where this is right now. It's going to be over those temperatures for the next 24 hours, but when it gets near the coastline over here, you can see the temperatures drop off a little bit. And uh, we, it may, may not strengthen right up until landfall, but we could very well see a Category 3. It's, it's all a timing issue, and, and it is in a favorable environment. But the sea surface temperatures are awful warm right now. Here's the official forecast track in that hurricane warning all the way down near Tampico and all the way up uh, near Baffin Bay, Texas. And it looks like it's going to come in the halfway mark here right around La Pesca, give or take. Uh, as a Category 1 slash Category 2, the official forecast anyway. Here's the surge forecast from uh, the Weather Underground maps, and we see uh, 3 to 6 foot on average in South Texas. Most of the surge will be coming into Mexico down here, and there's even a surge potential up here in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama of about 3 feet, so that's going to bring in some of that oil. That's not a good situation at all. Here are the intensity forecast models. Uh, 80, 82 knots, uh, and that is the ship's model. And so that's, they're thinking Cat 1, maybe Cat 2 at landfall in about uh, 24 to 36 hours. Here's the surface map. And again, uh, what we're looking at is the uh, um, high pressure right here, 1022 millibars. It's shifting off to the east, and that's going to inevitably shove this into Mexico. And it may even cause it to come a little bit south of due west as it comes in toward the shore. We also have low pressures down here in Mexico. And I was checking the pressures up and down the coast which I like to do to figure out where storms are going to go. And the lowest pressures I could find were in Tampico South down here, so it would not surprise me that this dips off to the south a little bit at landfall. And again, they're preparing out there in the oil rig area. Just heard from Riggy, and uh, apparently there are some people out there getting nauseous from the fumes of the oil, and it's just uh, the seas are kicking up, and it's a real miserable situation out there. But they're going to continue working out there, apparently. They're not going to get gale force winds. All right, here is uh, Chris's TropicalAtlantic.com, and we like to show this model map uh, to show you what models are performing the best. So let's get it uh, centered here on Hurricane, what's soon to be Hurricane Alex. The best performing model is the AP-13 model. Those are aviation ensemble models, the AP models, and number 13 is the best performer off by about 109 miles over five days, and that takes it clearly into La Pesca, Mexico. Um, as uh, as a hurricane here right into La Pesca, Mexico. Now, if you take all the models on the right here uh, that make landfall, 58 of them, out of the 58, 89.6% have it going into Mexico, and only 10% have of them going into Texas, have Alex going into Texas. So it's looking good for Texas, uh, maybe some windy weather on the south coast, but the majority of this is going to be in Mexico. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back with another update either late tonight or tomorrow morning on the situation. Again, thank you again for visiting Hurricane City.